Can you hear me all right? Yep. The first, the first question no. is not my question, it's that young gentleman over there. Okay. Uh, it's quite a good point, I think. Uh, he said, you made a statement a few minutes ago that you've been pro-change for the last 12 months. Correct, yep. Why was it in, in that case, when you had the chance at the EGM to use your vote for pro-change, why did you vote with the flow? Uh, I didn't just vote with the flow. I, I looked at the position myself and the suggestions that were being made and the offer that was on the table, although it wasn't that detailed an offer, I can assure you. Um, we never saw a business plan, as you all know, and if you remember, Mo said he didn't think he needed to produce a business plan. I think he's on record as saying that. And I made, I made my decision and didn't vote with the board. As you know, I voted against the board, as it were, on the, uh, on the Mike Newton issue, and I made my own decision that I thought that there could be better and different options out there. Simple as that. Yeah, well, at the EGM, Mike, you must admit, that was the golden opportunity to get things altered. And you blew it. Let, let's be honest, you blew it. Well, I blew it. Yeah, <laughs> you, I did I blow it? <laughs> you, you blew it quite simply because if you'd have put your, your size 8, if you'd have put that in against the, the people you were sitting alongside, who it's, it's an open secret, as, as you, none of you can stand the sight of one another. <laughs> if you'd have done that, you'd have done what you're talking you want to do. Talk's cheaper. Well, I, I can only repeat myself. I made the decision on what was there, what I saw on the table. I also knew in the background that there were other uh, offers out there. There were other things on the table. And I thought it better to see what was there and to see if there's anything better than what was on offer. And I considered that there were better things on offer. And I made the decision purely myself. There was no... There were, uh, each, each director or shareholder could make up their own decisions on that one. As it happens, um, it didn't quite go through. I understand that. I understand your disappointment at that. But that was the decision I made. And it was my decision and my decision alone. Okay, Mike, what yeah. was the, why was the £50,000 spent to buy Rob Lee's boats and not on the promotion push of that season? How did, well... <laughs> I don't, I don't, yeah, the season was over, but I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't... It still would have been more money for the playing fund. Um, uh, well, no, it wouldn't, because because it, this, this is just money going out. It doesn't matter who bought those shares. That, that's not extra money into the football club. Self-preservation, that's all it was. Well, you say it's self-preservation. Um, you, you can argue the same, and I don't want to go over this, because we should not we shouldn't be looking forward and not going backwards. But you can argue the same, you can argue the same thing about Mo. Mo wanted to buy the shares so that he could uh, get in and get his 51%. There's no doubt about that. He didn't offer full price for the shares, as you know, which people have been talking about before, and I'm texting me. He didn't. He made a decision to, A, offer only £40,000 for the shares, and B, not even guarantee that he would pay Brox up for those shares only when he got a 51% majority. So that's why Brox up backed off and decided a bird in the hands was two in the bush and sold to uh, the board at par. That's exactly, that's exactly what happened. Okay. After the Crawley game, Glenn yes. was outside and questioned right. about that £50,000. Yes. He said, we knew the vote was going to be close, so we bought the shares. Yes. So that's going against well, everything what the shareholders are. That's nothing but self-preservation. Well, I, I can't comment on that. I wasn't, I wasn't outside. I wasn't part and parcel of that, that, those, uh, those, those talks. I was there, of course, before the game when it didn't, it didn't come up. Um, but you can argue this either way, can't you? You can argue, you can say, well, uh, Mo wanted to do it so he could get control, and we wanted to do it because we would rather have those shares in-house. And you can argue it out, but the point is, it's water under the bridge, it's gone now, it's historic, it's not going to change, so we need to move on. And, and, you know, I really mean that. There's no point in dragging up everything that's gone on over the last 12 months. Mike, can I, can just a minute, hang on, hold on. Sorry, before you, before you do, Mike, can I just clarify something? I, I want Mike to clarify something. When Black and Gold started, there was an objective to remove the Valiant 2001 board. At the present moment in time, if we accept that Bill Bratt and Glenn Oliver are going, there's only one member left, and that is Mike, who, who I think does potentially the, the, the least sense that. Can you confirm, Mike, that 
whether you would personally back the re-election of any of the directors who have been forced off the board. No. Simple as that. My own personal question. Yep. You mentioned a little bit earlier on that season tickets are 300, approximately 300 down on last year. About that, yeah. To be quite honest, you lost all my faith in you when you came out with that comment. That is nothing but a fragrant lie. I mean, the figures up to now prove that point. The, the gate on Saturday, yesterday, was over a thousand down on the previous year. And the fact of the matter is, the truth is, there's probably 300 people in here who haven't renewed season tickets, and there's a lot more. We've got to be open and transparent, and kidding people, people have bought tickets when they have. And let me point out, if Penny made the comment to Mark Rutter, who was the person who organised Starman Out in the yep. first place, whose idea it was, he knows that you admitted Starman Out is hurting you, you've now reneged yep. on that, and. My own belief, and the other people here can make their own decision. If I can't believe you on that, what can we believe well, you on? Where, where, where have I reneged on what I've said before, Mike? You're, I don't you, understand. You it. said you're only 300 season yeah. tickets down on last oh, season. I, I do let, not believe that. Yeah, it, it, I don't it, believe it. it. It, the figure, no, I didn't say through. I said between three and four hundred. If you listen back to what I said, well, there's, there's between okay, there's between three and four hundred season tickets. If anyone wants to come into the club to verify that position, they can. Does that include it, it, no, it does not include. Let, let, let Pep, just, just one second. It, it's a really good point because um, it confused me a short while ago because I kept hearing um, this figure of over four thousand season tickets last year. Four two, four three, was it? Four three. Um, but but when I looked at the when I looked at all the, the, the books and the accounts, it, it included free season tickets. Um, once we gave to staff for various reasons, there were there were an awful lot of free season tickets in that figure. The figure that Mike's given you is sold season tickets. So in terms of the season tickets down on that people are actually paying for. We're around about three to four hundred down, depending on how how we did yesterday and, and today. Mike, could I just say, say, if you would like to come to, no, if you'd like to ring me, I'd rather, and, look, I'd rather look at the bank statements. What yeah, you paid into the bank. I'm, I'm, That's if, what you I'm like, if you would like, if you would, wait, wait, look Mike. If you would like to come into the club and meet with me. You can go into the accounts department and we'll show you exactly what the sales are. The Radio Stoke, Radio, Radio Stoke came in some time ago and looked at those figures and they were verified. So I can assure you that that is the figure. Uh, it's, uh, the point just been made, the need, they, those figures need verifying against the bank. But anyway, I will let that one go. The second part is... I'm, you just said you want to speak to Mark Sims about, you know, trying to reopen negotiations to bring him on the board, which to me would be a major step forward for yourselves because we, we've got a lot of faith in it. The point I want to make, and this is no disrespect to you, Mike, you can talk to Mark Sims till you're blue in the face, but as long as there's the gruesome twosome. Are they going to have any input until until they go? They will. They will. They they will have a say, and they'll be saying no, no, no. And as long as they are there, they won't be moving today or tomorrow at the very Mike, latest. Mike, 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 Mike. Yeah. Can I just come back on that? I did say earlier on that because the board's got to be quiet. You've got to replace one director with another one as you move along. It's and if, two if, they, to if, those two, if those two step... Well, we've got to wait till December to get rid of Blair. Uh, so, yeah, because, because he's agreed not to stand yeah, and other directors have to go on to the board. It's quite clear. You cannot operate unless you pour it. You can't do anything. You can't buy players. You can't sell players. You can't trade players. Well, but they, but they have to be... They have to be... They have to, it has to go out on a letter, it has to go out to shareholders for them to be bought in. We, na names will be... Mike, 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 how come we've had to go all over, over to America? Here, Mike. 
<laughs> How come we've had to go to America to find investment when we've had two local people who are willing to invest? Who were veil fans, one of them's one of the biggest veil fans that there is. Now, are these people that you're bringing in veil fans? Well, you could say that about Mo Chowder, who's never set foot in that football club. Yeah, I know, I know. But no, 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 if you want, if you want to go down that trail, that, that is exactly, hold on. If you want to go down the trail, and you're talking about Americans, you need, you need major investment. There's major investment out there in the States, there's major investment all over the place. But you can't say that just because they're, they're not Vale supporters or Vale fans that they won't be good for the football club. You can't yeah, say that. Well, that's what Bill Russell is. That's what Bill Russell always says. Well, I can't answer for Bill Bratton. I'm not Bill Bratton. Now, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry. Yeah, there's a good question just up there whether the new investment will require a change of the 24.9% rules. So it will not. Absolutely. We spoke. We spoke. This is Anna. We spoke over a period of five years, just like Mo was talking about a period of five years. And there are other ways that investment can come into that football club that is not by way of shares. For instance, if the new stand is completed, that doesn't have to be coming in the way of shares. It might cost a million pounds. Everybody keeps saying, when are you going to finish the stand? You don't have to issue shares to do that. You don't have to issue shares to, in you don't have to, issue shares to improve the facilities, the training ground facilities, or anywhere else. All, all, takes, money out, all takes money out of the football club. Sorry? Well, of course, of, of, of course you need players, of course you need players, and that's fine, but it's all part and parcel of improvements at the ground. You need commercial income. If you don't get commercial income, you cannot survive in the football world. Too many football clubs are losing millions of pounds. It's no way forward, you need it. Uh, if I could just, uh, whilst, what, what does that say, Jeff? Can I just ask Mike, um, in regards to the new investment, are the council a partner in the new investment? And if not, what is their view over the new investment in relation to the uh, comments they made about the potential Mo Chowdhury situation? Um, no, they're not partners at all. The, the council stay out of all this. You, you all know the terms of the loan that's out there. So they are not partners in it at all. But of course, the terms of the loan, as Mo knows, are that um, they have to approve of changes because they have a charge over the stadium and over the assets of the football club. It's as simple as that. Are you in